Welcome back everybody. Just Mike here. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free. Anyway, today we're going to work on a Steph Thomas clock. And I do believe it's called the ships, Ship Bells or something like that. Let's take a look at this. So here we have the clock. And it does have the two winders on it. And it does wind up, but it will not tick. Here's fast and slow, and here's where you turn the bells on or off. And we can turn this and the bells work. But our hand's not in the right place, evidently. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the hands off. There's three screws here. We'll take those off because I do believe it comes out this way. Looking on the back, there is a hole so you can see the ticker in there. I've moved the ticker. I've From here, I've oiled just the one side of it. It still won't go. The only other screws here are these two here, and those go to the gong that you hear in here. That's a nice heavy plate dial and of course you can tell it needs cleaned. I guess it is. There's the gong in there. There's a spring ticker, I forget what they call that, but like I say, it will not keep running. It'll run for a little bit and it stops. Considering it's been in that box, it actually looks pretty good. This here has got some kind of tarnish on it, which is no big deal. So I can't make this out. I got to get a magnifying glass. There's a chance you might be able to make it out on the camera here. To get this off, I see there's a pin here, a pin here, and a pin there. So let me get those out so we can take a look at the front of the clock or at least get into it a little bit better. And just strike only. Hmm. So the snail here is odd looking for what I'm used to seeing. Let's see about uh, releasing these so they have no more energy in there before we start taking some of this apart. To be able to release it, no use trying to show you, but I'm going to have to crank this up and 
right in here is there's a clicker there's a clicker there so before I damage this let me take it off so I can get these let down without bending my hammer the way it is right now I've already loosened these Now taking this plate off, I see that the fan will call it's going to be pop now there too. That's a little touchy. It takes two screws to pull it out. I think now that I have, we'll say a level plate, I can go ahead and put my legs on so I can get it held up so I'm not damaging anything else and that way I can get those uh, springs here let down There we go. Now let me go ahead and get pictures of everything I can see here. And I'll do pictures in layers as I take this apart. So I can easily see how I get this thing back together again. So on these winders, this one looks like it's been bent in there pretty good. I don't know what's going on with that. This one's Mark 30. This is Mark 31. And looking at the winders, they both wind the same way. So we're going to have to see what the difference is in these. Might be the size. This one looks a little bit smaller. These are heavily greased. Really dirty grease. Now this has several wires, spring wires, whatever, around this post here is a wire that comes over here and it attaches to this one and I'm not sure where it's hooked in at but oh I see it's wrapped around this post here. Here's another spring wire and this one's just setting here but it, it hooks on for this one. Then of course you have this spring here and that spring there. So if you're going to attempt to do one of these, get some pictures and maybe use your screwdriver to point out, especially these small ones that you can't really see.
And as we take the layers off, we're going to probably take pictures again because it's a little complicated, but then again, it does have certain gears that you should possibly understand on working on other clocks. You notice this has got two points there. That's to do the half hour, an hour, I'm sure. It's another thing that you got to pay attention to when you're putting this clock back together again. Taking this one off and all of these Eclipse, I took the Eclipse off of here, all these Eclipse are stainless because my magnetic screwdriver does not catch them. Now what I'm doing with this because it's so tight and whatnot, is as each one I'm going to take off, I'll take a picture of it so I can put it on backwards from the way I took this thing apart. So I don't get messed up on anything. So I think I'll take this, this one off next. Now this one has the spring wire, so that's what I'm going to record actually pulling this one off. So this here is just resting on here to give it that spring. I thought there might be a loop or something in there. But it's just resting on there. We're going to try to get this one off next. It's keeper is clear under here. So that washer's metal, but the Eclipse aren't steel whatever so here we can get this off this is your snails an odd looking snail but that technically speaking I guess that's what that is and of course you have this gear here and this gear is damaged I don't know if you can see that or not but it looks like it's got a crack and it's got a tooth missing here So we're going to take this one out next because now it doesn't go to anything. I mean, it does, but not operating anything as we got enough off of here. So now that I got tore down as far as I can with all these levers and whatnot, this movement has to be taken apart this way because this doesn't come off. And this is going to stay on also. And if I take this thing apart this way, all of those gears that are in there will stay and be easier to put in, I do believe. Cross my fingers. Um, let's see here. This here can stay for now anyway. Get that off. Let's see if we can get that off right now. I'm not sure if that gear is going to come up or what's going to go on with it. So let's take those two screws out there and see if we can get this off. So I might as well take that off too. And again, I'm taking pictures on layers of how I'm doing this so I can get it back on and possibly get a picture of where the screw is setting in Jason with the plate. So I have a better idea. This here is how you'd set the speed of the clock. Okay, I was able to just pop this up and out. Screws are still in here. Right there, I had to move it around in order to get the gear there to release the gear down there. 
So this only has one nut on it. So these two posts here are going to have to unscrew out, which it, they're acting like a nut into another post that probably looks like that one. So now I have to hold the plate together, flip this around, and keep weight on it so it doesn't tip over. I only have three legs. And let's see if we can get this off of here. So there you go. Let's get a picture of that so we can see how all those gears are setting. So let's take this thing apart. This one right here has an E clip, but that one goes to the hour shaft. So we're going to see if we don't have to take that out. It definitely has oil in here. A picture of those gears. And now these three gear or four gears will be coming out as well. Pictures your friend, so don't be afraid to take these pictures. How odd does that look? That's because of the we'll call it the bells. Even though it's a gong in this clock. That one stays. And this one should come out. Warning pin. So this one's to the hour hand. This one's to, let's just call it the Pac-Man. So we're going to put this in the cleaner. This here plate, the plates themselves, I do believe they've got a lacquer finish on them. So I'm not leaving them in the cleaner very long. And I'll still scrub them down with Dawn dishwash soap and any of these holes I'm, that the gears go into. I'm going to take a toothpick from one side to the other and clean them so that way they'll be nice and fresh and get rid of the old oils and whatnot that the cleaner wasn't able to get out. And then I'll work on these a little bit later. So there's where the mainspring attaches to the barrel. And this here is supposed to be closer to that, or so they say. Sometimes they won't go in, you just start moving the plate around. And that might be why it's in there, but like I say, I don't know if you can see this or not, but from here about here you can tell this is dented in you kind of see that in the camera like it was smashed in wrong or something so there's where the spring attaches and this one's on this side this plate looks pretty good so when it comes to this plastic gear that's got the crack right through here 
and the one tooth missing. I don't know that much about ordering these things, so I'm going to be looking online to see what I can come up with. So obviously I have to count the these teeth and I have to count these teeth, but there's no number on here to really tell me what I'm looking at, I guess. So this is the number 31. I'm going to keep it separate from this one because like I say, this one here is a little bit smaller. The way I pop these open now, get to the end of that, get a piece of wood or the back of a screwdriver. It don't want to come out. There we go. Look at that. And it actually looks quite dry, we'll say. Yeah, it's dry. It has some kind of a dry grease on there. So let me get my gloves on and we'll pull that out. If you see how dry that looks or how filthy that is that oil is just all dried up in there so I'm going to run this through the ultrasound then I'm going to take some uh, Oh, what's it called? Denature alcohol. Well, first I'm going to do WD-40 on it and scrub that with a, a pad this color. It's not too aggressive, but that way I can scrub that cleaner than what it is now. And I'll also be straightening out the, the spring so that way it loses the memory it has here and should be bigger. And then I'll wipe it down with denatured alcohol to clean all that WD-40 off because WD-40 is a uh, acid and it's a lubricant too, but the acid's there to free up your screw or whatever you're squirting it on, but it has an acid in it. So that way it'll start eating your spring or corroding your spring. And so that's why you want that off of there. And also to that out. And then after you get done with that, you need to oil this. But what I plan on doing is putting putting it in the barrel first because it's easier to do that. And then I'm going to use clock oil on the spring when I get done when I get done putting this back together again. And then this here plate will go back on. This is rough as that was getting the plate off. That might be why they bent the plate. I'm not sure. But I'll do this spring first. And then I'm going to come back to this one. This Mark 31 on top. This one was Mark 30. So that way I can keep the two springs separate. I just got this taken out. I don't know if you can see how dirty that thing is, dirty, nasty, however you want to call it. So that's why it's good to clean your springs, especially in the barrels, especially if your clock stopped. I don't know if you can see how shiny that is inside. That's a lot of oil that someone might have tried squirting into the hole. Right there. But it's super nasty looking. So in my opinion, it's a good thing I'm getting this thing cleaned up. 
So I went ahead and just put the gears in because they're so small I'm trying to figure out which one's which. And I do believe I got them all into place now. But just to remember, on this plate here, I took a toothpick. And you can see how dirty that thing is. And I went through each one of the holes where these gears fit in. I did on one side and came back on the other side and put them in there. Even with the cleaner I've noticed though, and scrubbing them with Dawn dishwash soap and that kind of stuff, the bigger gears that are sitting on the side of these gears, I've noticed that the oil was so old it looked like grease and it wasn't coming out. And so I took my small screwdriver and ran up and down the gears and then I also took a toothpick and ran up and down them just to make sure to try to get as much of that stuff out as I could. Like I say this is just filthy from going through every one of these holes here. So now I need to get this plate on and then I'll be back after that. So if you can see that oops see this one right here I can tell now I need to bush it because can you see that thing wiggling in there and so far that's the only one that looks like it needs to be bushed everything else is so small I don't know that I'd be able to see it tell you the truth because the ends of the gears are so small but this one here is definitely one that needs to be done so I'll get that taken care of and then get this thing back together again I got the new bushing in. I got it all back together again. There's two gears that look almost exactly alike. And the only difference is, is the one gear is just a little bit bigger than the other. And where the fan is going to go, the gear that I had here wouldn't reach the fan. So I had to take that apart and change it to the right one. So anyway... We have these going now and turning them like this shows me for sure I have all the gears in. I did put the nuts on as I could and when I say put them on I just finger tighten them and move these gears around to get them into place and actually this one is pretty easy getting them to pop right in compared to some of the movements I've worked on. So our first headache is done. This is going to be the bigger headache, I think. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, but I think so. So anyway, let me look at my plans and see what goes next. What I did, because there's so many of these, I took a picture and... I pointed at each one as I took it apart so I can go backwards on the picture and get them to come back in here where they're supposed to be. I do, I do hope. So I thought I only had one bushing. I've marked each one of these that I had to fix. And I got all them in. That drove me crazy because when I was trying to get my uh, part that rings a uh, gong, it would turn really nice and whatnot. And then next thing I know, it wouldn't turn at all. So I got to look and, and these are so small that, now that one's big, but these are so small that you couldn't really see them and started wiggling them back and forth. And... Now they're all nice and tight because I have new bushings. So the message on the inside of this movement pretty much tells you all this clock has had a problem since 05, 805, and all they wanted was the strike adjusted, but evidently there was more than what was more than that that was wrong with this clock and they didn't want to pay the money to have the bushings put in and that's understandable because who knows how much they charge for the 
bushings to be put in, but just the same. It was a nice clock. There's the gear I needed compared to the plastic one that had a crack in it and the smaller teeth. I can't show you. It's clear inside there. The smaller teeth, there was one tooth totally gone and the one next to it was smashed over and ready to just break off. And I couldn't see putting the clock back together just because of that. So let's get back to this clock. So this gear that I got needs to go on to here and to get it onto there I'm going to take this arm back off this lever and I need to take this one off in order to get that to lay down on there okay I was messing with this clock trying to get the timing done and whatnot and I noticed I forgot to do this one let me shake it and I'll show you but I can see I don't have a new bushing in there So I'm going to have to take this whole thing apart again just to get that bushing done. That's a lot of pieces. So I'll be right back after I get that done. So I got the new bushing in and got everything back together. I've been adjusting this here which is a silences clock so it makes no uh, gong and which all it is this rod here will catch the fan and not let it go around so that's what shuts that off and now I need to install this in order to be able to adjust this and this will be adjusting the speed to the clock so let me get that in and see if I have any bad words to say <laughs> during that, but this, I, it should be a piece of cake now. And by the way, I'm leaving all the black lines on that I put on here. That's a permanent mark which you can get off, but that's going to be, in my words, a sign of which ones I did this time. Okay, I got it screwed in. I just wound it up. It's ticking away beautifully. Like I say, I didn't take this apart. I did oil the part right there on both sides. And this, it's got the, what are they, rubies or whatever, the crystals on both ends. I couldn't oil this one unless I took it apart because it's got that hairspring there. But I was able to get a little bit of oil on the other side. Hopefully got in where it need, needed to, but just the same it is ticking and now the next thing I'm going to have to do is like I say this here is the speed to speed the clock up or slow it down and I would guess because it's right inside here it should be fine So there's the speed and there's what shuts the bell on and off or turns the bell on and off. So some people might want to not listen to it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and clean this dial up a little bit. Not much because it, you can tell where they're kind of messing around or sticking the key in and scratch the heck out of it. But just the same, it is still a nice clock. And a Howard Miller at that. Okay, trying again to readjust the snail. Yeah. 
Yeah, one ring there. One ring there. When I say one ring, it's going ding ding. Now when it does the half hour, why I don't understand this clock, but it'll still only ring, such as right there, should be ringing bing 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 bing. And on the half hour, give an extra single bing. But it doesn't do it out of the case. So there's two rings again for the half hour. Now we're coming to the hour. One, two, three. So it should ring three again, and then of course the one bing afterwards. One, two, three. Like I said, I don't know where it gets this extra bing, but it does fantastic in the, in the case. So let's go ahead and do the four bings. One, two, three, four. Now we need a four again, and I have to watch to make sure it doesn't get too close to this here and get caught up. Okay, see we're, we're it's not able to drop all the way down. And so I'm gonna take this turn it back just a little bit get that gear to hit in there there we go so it's supposed to ring right there when I move this a little bit more one two three four let's go through this again one One, one, two, should be two again, one, two, see I did three, so it's just off a little bit more, or not a little bit more, but off a little bit. There, getting that gear to pop down in. I think I'm on the half hour, I wouldn't pay attention. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we need two fours. It doesn't look like it's going to do too well. Two, three, Four. See, we're going to miss it because the, the, this is getting in the way. That means I need to back this up to get that extra set. And before it happens, let's see what if I can do this. Okay, we'll get our extra four in there. See how close that is. We still have a little bit of room. One, two, three, four. Now we should be at the ones. One. One, two. So I'm off still. Unless I don't understand this clock, which I will admit, I don't. Put it back where it was. So here's going to be our... Let me move this up here where it's supposed to be up, I'm going to guess. Two o'clock or whatever. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. Now see this hit clear down into the four. One, two, 
one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna, okay, we have just enough room. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend I don't know what the heck's going on, that I got it just right, because that there's just missing. I'm gonna put it back in the case and it'll be a miracle. It's gonna work like it's supposed to. <laughs> don't ask me what's going on. Okay, I got the plate on and made sure to leave my fingerprints to prove I work on this clock. Now this is a little difficult getting it to drop down in here, but it does drop down in. And after you put that on or in, then the plate sets on there and then you screw this thing down. But what we're going to do is, yeah, we'll go ahead and put that down. We won't screw it down tight because we want to make sure this is still gonging like it's supposed to be. So I got this thing ticking away now, and by the sounds of the bells, I got to adjust that a little bit more. And so I'm just going to let this thing run, get that oil worked in good, and then I'm going to readjust the snail on here in order to get it to ring like it's supposed to. So I got the ship ship's clocked or ship's bells uh, clock working. Uh, it was kind of froze up just because of age and not being clean for a while. And like that message said on the inside, just adjust it. It's because they didn't want to spend the money to have new bushings put in this clock. And which you saw I had several of them I did have to replace. The hardest part about this clock was is Compared to, let's say, a cuckoo clock, I'm so used to knowing what pictures you need to take in order to get it back together again when it comes to the levers and whatnot. This one here, it had so many levers on it, such as the one that shuts the bells off and this, that, and other thing. And I didn't, we'll say, exactly take the pictures I needed. I had pictures of gears but I wasn't paying as much attention to some of those levers that I should have. Anyway, we got the clock back together again. I had the bell ringing just fine, but then I had to take it apart again because there's other like adjustments I needed to do. And those adjustments are done now. But like I say, I'm just going to let this thing run to get that oil worked in. And then I'll take it apart and then readjust for the bells to work. I do know if you were watching the video, there's that one small gear that has two little forks, I guess, or pins sticking out of it. That there needs to be adjusted for the hour that the lever that sets up against it is pretty much square, we'll say. When it comes to the half hour, those things will be sitting sideways in the lever will be pushed out further and that's that lever that does push on there is the one that will do the ring and then the last bing for just a single ring for the 
half hour. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free. And give me a good thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you'd like to leave a comment or anything else, you go for it. Until next time, God bless.